This video is a continuation of my last one, but we're taking it to the max. As some of you may or may not know, Apple doesn't support more than two screens on the newest M1 Mac Mini, and more than one screen on M1 laptops like the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. That is no longer the case. Today, we're connecting up to six screens to the Mac Mini and five to the MacBook Air. We'll cover the how, which adapters I used, compare the adapters, look at how the Macs are working in Activity Monitor, and answering subscriber questions like how the system works under stress, and how well demanding tasks work. Let's get started. The first we're doing is the Mac Mini. I also went out and purchased an M1 MacBook Air for these tests. Our screen setup is as follows. The main TV is a 65-inch Samsung 4K over HDMI. That's going to the main port on the Mac Mini, and we're not going to use it on the MacBook Air because the MacBook Air only supports one external screen. The next screen is a 40-inch Sony TV with HDMI input at 1080p. That's straightforward as well and will go to both the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air. You might also notice that I have a CalDigit Thunderbolt 3 dock. That's to make swapping between the two devices easier. So the CalDigit is first connected to the Mac Mini and offers a series of ports. And to it, we take one of the USB-C ports and adapt it to HDMI for the second screen. At this point, we start with screen 3. And if you haven't already, please see the first video for instructions on installing the Display Link Manager. With it installed, the third screen is a simpler 1080p touchscreen 24 inches over HDMI and using the original pluggable adapter. In my experience, pluggable was a little worse in quality than the following adapters for screens 4, 5, and 6. Please note, we have already surpassed Apple's M1 maximum of two screens. For screen number 4, it's an LG 32 inch that offers both DisplayPort and HDMI at 75Hz. We adapt the HDMI from the screen to StarTech.com's 4K HDMI to USB 3.0 adapter. Compared to Pluggable, I had a terrific experience with the StarTech.com ones. And I don't know whether this is just marketing on their end, but they claim to have an external graphics card inside of it. I have no idea what this is like or what it does. I would read more about it instead of referring to this video for what they mean by external graphics card. Screens 5 and 6 are a 4K Dell and a 1920x1200 Asus ProArt 75Hz refresh rate, and they're both configured to go over DisplayPort. I don't know what kind of magic they're doing, how they're driving two DisplayPorts, one of which is 4K over USB 3.0. We're covering stress tests soon, and you'll see that the results are pretty good. And the moment of triumph. Six screens on an M1 Mac. Now time for the MacBook Air. After we swap out the Thunderbolt cable, everything is connected into the CalDigit, so it's a straightforward process. We'll set up Display Link, and voila. Next up, we have subscriber questions answered. But first, I want to say a huge thank you to people like Budswithnik, Oswald, G. Westerneng, and Reynald Adolf. You guys don't know how much your comments mean, and I'm really happy to have helped. A lot of the questions share the same theme, centered around performance, especially when running 4K, and having Activity Monitor up to show how the CPU does. So I did two things. I played videos at maximum resolution from my favorite YouTubers page on all of the display link screens and measured that with Activity Monitor, and I tried playing around with Final Cut Pro and rendering video while playing 4K video and seeing how the display link monitors respond. The overall experiences were awesome. The StarTech ones did a little bit better, but the pluggable held its own, with few dropped frames with maximum resolution videos on all display link screens. But I'll let you guys be the judge of the quality. I also want to mention that the Max fan was completely silent, something I've never seen before. The next question from Charles was how does it behave if you do try the display port with HDMI plugged in? I went ahead and plugged in one of the screens using display port into the CalDigit using the Thunderbolt dock as requested. And as predicted, it did not work because the MacBook Air only supports one display over either of its Thunderbolt ports. They both just get blocked out and don't show anything. The next question from Pesnik is what happens if you try to close the lid of the MacBook or leave it open? When we close the lid, nothing crashes, it works as expected. All the windows reappear and we can configure it, assuming we have a mouse and keyboard connected. 
And that's one when we go ahead to reopen this laptop, which we're doing now. The laptop screen powers on and everything restores to the original display configuration as originally. That's it for subscriber questions and thanks again for asking them. Feel free to ask more in the comments below. Last but not least, before we end the video, I want to show a quick fix for having Display Link start up when you start up your Mac or when you log in for the first time. If you go to System Preferences, Users, and then Login Items, you'll want to locate in your applications the Display Link Manager and then click and drag that into your login items once you've typed in your password. What that'll do is start up Display Link Manager so you don't need to open the application every time you start up your Mac to use all the additional displays. And that sums up the video. Today we ran six screens on M1 Macs or five additional screens on M1 Mac laptops. We went through Final Cut tests, 4K playback and performance tests, and the adapters worked awesomely. As always, comment below if you have any questions. I want to say a huge thanks again for tuning in, and a huge thanks to Adriana and Chris for their music cover, and for your awesome comments and awesome questions. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope you have, as always, you have a great day.